Hi everyone and welcome to the next video. In this video we're going to be looking at getting information from our hardware layer into our software. So Siemens has a mechanism for this called tags and tags sit here in PLC tags. Um, if we click on one of our IO modules or objects we can see down here on the IO tags that we have something sort of pre-configured for us already. So what we're seeing here is the memory address in this column here that represents each channel on our digital input. So our digital input um, hardware has 16 channels and we can see here 0 to 7, which is the first eight, and then one, sorry, 0, 0.0 to 0 0.7, which is the first eight, and then 1.0 uh, to 1.7 down here, which is the second eight. Um, so it's two bytes because in one byte there are uh, seven, uh, sorry, eight bits, naught to seven. And here is the second byte. Now, in a lot of uh, PLC environments, that's how you access them in bytes. Uh, you can still do that into your portal if you want to, um, but it is set up to have boolean or bit access for each input which is much nicer um, than having to sort that stuff out yourself in my opinion so let's have a uh, look at the mechanics of how you actually get this into your program so right now you could if you wanted to address this directly um, and tier portal would ask you to create a tag or here you can just type in whatever you want it to be so Typically what I see is people typing something like uh, pump feedback, for example. Um, and you can see that it automatically creates a tag. And that's what this little icon is here. This little purple icon to say that it appears in a tag data, but in a tag table. And it puts it in the default tag table. And right now we don't have any other tables. Um, you can go ahead and create a second one. Um, something like level switch and uh, you can see that it adds it into the default tag table and then if we go to plc tags here and go to show all tags we can see that our two tags that we've just created appear in here and in the same manner if i was to put in here valve feedback for example it would create it in the default tag table because there's nothing we don't have another table right now and if i went back to my hardware we can see valve feedback and it's exactly the same for analog inputs so the addressing is different because analog inputs take up more space because obviously it's an analog that we're sending we're sending a number rather than just a on or off signal so they go to our words so you'll notice that this starts at word two, and this one ends at uh, word one bit seven. So they're not allowed to overlap. You're not allowed to have the, um, the address of two input cards overlap each other. Uh, tier portal will throw an error if you try and do that. Um, so it's exactly the same thing. We can add something in here, say level signal, adds it into the default tag table, flow meter and it adds it into the default tag table and exactly the same for outputs as well except these are Q addresses and we only have eight of them so this is one bytes worth uh, access to all eight bits on this particular card and we can say pump run um, um, we can say uh, something like uh, auto switch or what, whatever we're, we're using on here. And that's really it. We've now mapped the uh, actual information coming from this card to a software object, which is the tag that we can then use in our program. So let's have a talk about the addressing and how we can make that more relative to what we're doing so in my systems or if anybody has looked at any of the other stuff i've put out in the past on um linkedin or anything like that uh you'll know that i'm a fan of structured design 
So for me, I would never be using these tags directly in the software or more than once. They'd go through a mapping process um, to map them to something that's relative to the asset they're controlling. Um, so for me, what I like to do is instead of putting pump run, auto switch uh, and things like that, I try to uh, give a reference as to physically where it is on the hardware. So if I come to slot two here, instead of it being pump feedback, I would have my comments as P100 because that would be the tag for my pump and then feedback. And that tells me the asset that this signal belongs to and what this actual signal is doing. And then here would be S2.0. And what that tells me is this is slot two, channel zero. And I would do the same for all of these. So level switch 100, uh, healthy. And valve feedback could be V100, for example, open. But these would become S2.1 and S2.2. And then what I'd have is a new tag table which would be my inputs. So inputs, I can now segregate all of my inputs from my outputs in my system. And all I do is come to my default tag, uh, so my default tag table here and drop it down to inputs. And you can drag that down. If you don't catch the drop down, you can drag that down, overwrite, and they become part of the inputs now. And you can go and do that for the rest of them. The, the nice thing about this approach is you can actually create these tags um, fairly easily by dragging this down here. And now we have S2 up to 15. And again, drag this one down. And if you're not using them right now, you can set this to spare. You can't drag this down, unfortunately. It's a copy and paste job. But now it's very, very easy to see that you have your tags allocated already for every single connection that you have in your hardware. Um, there's no changing the hardware, setting anything up. It's done um, and it's nice and easy to see where the spare ones are or what is actually relative to that, um, that signal on that piece of hardware. You don't have to do this, but I do like this naming convention. I've used this for many years and uh, for me, it makes things much, much clearer when you see what we'll do with them uh, later. And that's it really. Uh, this gives you everything you need. Um, you have your address relative to the memory and the software. Because TierPortal is symbolic, it's not a huge uh, deal. You just need to be uh, sort of aware of the fact that you can't have them over overlapping. And when you start adding things like BSDs in and things like that, it's a good idea to segregate uh by having a, a gap between your addressing uh where that stuff's going but again we'll come on to that in future videos uh you have your relative naming convention so slot two channel zero and then you have your comment that tells you everything you need to know about that tag and just to clear any confusion we won't be using this tag throughout our program we'll we'll only be using it once and that can be confusing to people who've done previous PLC work where they do use um, sort of digital signals that come from that hardware layer over and over again, but it will become more clear uh, the further we go through this, uh, these videos.